we are going to use this integral as well in the physics to measure the gravity the function could possibly have given as a function of a derivative or called antiderivative integral of f of x dx can be equivalent to integral of g of x into dx what is d by dx of tan x secant squared x therefore integral of secant squared x students a warm welcome to one and all my name is vibha department of mathematics vidyashram pre university college the temple of excellence mysuru dear students in today's session we are going to learn the second year mathematics topic which is called integrals and here you are going to have a chapter number 7 from your ncert and here we are going to have session number 1 therefore what are all the topics we are going to study under this session dear students it's nothing but introduction and integration as an inverse process of differentiation okay and then you are going to have problems on integration so therefore for the introduction part where we are going to use this integrals in a real life for example you are going to study this integration in upgrade level which is called the engineering level and where we are going to use that engineers they are going to use these integrals in finding shape of a building okay and then we are going to use this integral as well in the physics to measure the gravity and then we are going to use this integration in three dimensional geometric model demonstration so this are all the uses you are going to have in day to day life of this integrals now we'll be moving on to now the topic of the introduction the function could possibly have given as a function of a derivative or called anti derivative or we are going to name it as primitive okay of the function and then further the formula that gives all this anti derivatives is called the indefinite integral dear students you are going to have in this integration is divided into two types one is definite integral another one is indefinite integral in that what do you mean by indefinite integral means here the formula that gives you all the anti derivatives is going to be called as indefinite integral of the function such process of finding is going to be known as anti derivative or the integration okay so here we are going to have integral calculus arises out of the efforts of solving the problems of the following types what are all those the problems of finding the function whenever the derivative is given and then the problem of finding the area bounded by the graph of the function under certain conditions dear students this second uh, point you are going to have in the applications of integrals in this you are going to study the indefinite integral as well as the definite integral topic okay so let us move on to the next is nothing but these two problems lead to the two forms of the integrals that is going to be known as the indefinite and then definite integral these are all the two types as i told you indefinite and the definite integrals which together constitute integral calculus so what do you mean by integral calculus means which you have indefinite as well as a definite integral okay so here there is a connection known as the fundamental theorem of calculation in indefinite and definite integral which makes the definite integral as a practical tool of a science and the engineering as i told you this is nothing but the advantages i have given here advantages i told you in the engineering they are going to use to find the shape of the building dear students okay so and then we are going to have the definite integral is also used to solve many interesting problems like from various disciplines like economics finance and then also the probability okay so in that finance level also and then economic level also they are going to use this integrals now without delay let us move on to what do you mean by the inverse process of differentiation or the integration here integration is a inverse process of differentiation instead of differentiating a function we are given a derivative of a function and asked to find the primitive that primitive is going to be known as the anti derivative of the given derivative function now here the original function such process is going to be known as the integration or the anti differentiation or the anti derivatives okay 
the presence of what is that finding the integral of a function is going to be known as the antiderivative or the anti differentiation now we'll be moving on to what are all the derivatives you have already studied in differentiation and what will be the integral part of the formula of that differentiation so here you know already d by dx of x power n is nothing but is here x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 therefore anti derivative will be ulta so d by integral of x to the power of n into dx so this is symbolically we are going to have symbolically we are going to denote the integration differentiation is denoted by like this d by dx of isn't it with respect to x you are going to derive so here integration symbolically we are going to write it like this so here integration of x power n into dx is nothing but given by the formula x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c where n should be not equal to minus 1 what happens if n it will be equal to minus 1 means here minus 1 plus 1 will get cancelled anything divided by 0 what happens if you put minus 1 in place of n it will become minus 1 plus 1 in the denominator 0 anything divided by 0 is not at all defined so therefore n should not be equal to minus 1 there so this is the antiderivative that means the integral of x power n formula is given by by x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So next will be have particularly d by dx of x is given by 1. Therefore integral of dx is given by x plus c. This is very very important. Okay. So and then you are going to have what is d by dx of sin x? Differentiating sin x gives you cos x. Therefore integrating cos x it will give you sin x ulta. So, integration of cos x is sin x plus c. Similarly, differentiating the minus cos x, it will be giving you a sin x. Therefore, integrating sin x, it will be giving you minus cos x plus c. Understood? So, this are all the important formula you are having. We will move on to the next one. What is d by dx of tan x? Second squared x. Therefore, integral of second squared x. Ulta. Integral of second squared x is nothing but a tan x plus c. And then you are having d by dx of minus cot x is nothing but cosecant squared x. Integral of cosecant squared x is nothing but minus cot x plus c. And then d by dx of secant x is secant x into tan x. Therefore, what is integral of secant x into tan x? It is secant x plus c. Dear students, we have not still gone to the integral of just secant x. We'll be studying later. Okay, just you need to note down all this formula and learn as well. So, and then d by dx of minus cosecant x is cosecant x into cot x. Therefore, integral of cosecant x into cot x is nothing but minus cosecant x plus c. So, and then we'll be moving on to the next one. What is d by dx of derivative of inverse function? Sin inverse of x is given by 1 divided by root of 1 plus x squared. Therefore, integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared into dx is given by sin inverse x plus c. And then integral of the d by dx of minus cos inverse x is nothing but 1 divided by root of 1 plus x squared or x squared plus 1. Therefore, integral of dx divided by root of 1 plus x squared can also be written as minus cos inverse x plus c. Otherwise, minus 1 over root of 1 plus x squared is nothing but cos inverse x plus c. Understood? Next, we'll be moving on to d by dx of tan inverse x is 1 by 1 plus x squared. Therefore, integral of 1 plus x squared is nothing but tan inverse x plus c. Similarly, d by dx of cot inverse x is minus 1 over 1 plus x squared or d by dx of minus cot inverse x is 1 by 1 plus x squared. Therefore, integral of minus 1 over 1 plus x squared is cot inverse x or 1 over 1 plus x squared is minus cot inverse x plus c. I hope you understood all this formula. Then we'll be moving on to d by dx of secant inverse of x is nothing but 1 over x into root of x squared minus 1. Please remember dear students, here all 1 plus x squared only you can observe here x squared minus 1. So therefore integral of dx divided by x into root of x squared minus 1 is nothing but secant inverse x plus c. Similarly, you are having d by dx of minus cosecant inverse x is nothing but 1 divided by x into root of x squared minus 1. Therefore, negative integral of 1 over x into root of x squared minus 1 is nothing but cosecant inverse of x plus c or minus cosecant inverse x plus c. 
see so next we will be having d by dx of e power x is e power x only therefore integral of e power x is e power x plus c so all this formula you need to remember to solve the problem dear students next formula that is d by dx of log of modulus of x which is 1 by x therefore integral of 1 by x is nothing but log of mod x plus c similarly you having d by dx of a power x divided by log a is nothing but a power x therefore integral of a power x into dx is nothing but a power x divided by log a plus c all this formula if you remember it's very easy to solve the problem dear students now we'll be moving on to the next some properties of the integrals so here we have taken the process of differentiating and integration are inverses of each other in the sense of the following results integral of f of x is integral of f of x into dx is f of x plus c okay so therefore here if we take it as let let f be the f be the anti derivative of anti derivative of f therefore you are going to have d by dx of ulta right d by dx of capital f of x is equal to f of x which implies ulta that is integral of this one what integral of f of x into dx is nothing but f of x plus c as we studied the formula now like that only we are deriving this is what the result you are going to have so here what they have asked two indefinite integrals with the same derivative lead to the same family of the curves and they are equivalent let me take it as let f and g be two functions be two functions so where d by dx of integral of f of x into dx because integration and differentiation will get cancelled which will be is equal to integral of that is d by dx of integral of g of x into dx otherwise we can write like this if you take it to this side it will become d by dx i can take common factor so therefore integral of f of x into dx minus integral of g of x into dx will be equal to 0 so therefore i can equate if you take it to the derivative that said 0 into anything will be equal to 0 only therefore integral of f of x into dx minus integral of g of x into dx will be equal to c because you are going to bring a constant so therefore i can have integral of f of x into dx is equal to integral of g of x into dx plus c where c is nothing but any real number it will belongs to any real number therefore i can write it as integral of f of x into dx plus c1 and integral of g of x into dx plus c2 where c1 c2 belongs to the real numbers so therefore integral of f of x dx can be equivalent to integral of g of x into dx of the same family curve i hope you got this one we'll be moving on to the next property integral of f of x plus g of x into dx can be written as integral of f of x into dx plus integral of g of x into dx okay so here this integral of for example if you are having 3 into cos x plus sin x into dx this is a different function you can write this integral of which can be written as integral of 3 cos x into dx plus integral of sin x into dx so this is what how you can write this property as well also also plus or minus it can come also in between minus here so it will be coming here minus this is was the speciality of this property you can split a so many of the function of the given integrals so we'll be moving on to the next for any real number k into f of x into dx can be written as k into f of x into dx so therefore if you are having here for example if you are having integral of 2 into x squared into dx you can write this one as 2 into c be careful multiplication is there 
2 into integral of x squared into dx. So see, this constant can be bring outside the integral. It will not affect the integral. I hope you got these properties. Now we'll be moving on to the problem solving. What they've asked? Find an antiderivative or the integral of the following functions by method of inspection. What is the method of inspection you are going to have? First, you are going to find out the derivative and then you are going to prove that it is the antiderivative. So here we'll be moving on to this first they have given sign 2x. What is the d by dx of d by dx of cos 2x? d by dx of cos 2x is nothing but see cos x first you are going to what is the cos theta differentiation? Cos theta differentiation is nothing but minus sine theta. Therefore you are having minus sine 2x theta replaces there 2x again theta differentiation theta differentiation means 2x differentiation what is the differentiation of 2x 2 into differentiation of x is 1 so 2 into 1 you are having into 2 into d by dx of x so which you can write it as minus sin 2x into 2 into 1 so therefore you can write this one as minus c 2 i am writing here only minus 2 into sin 2x. Isn't it? Therefore, they have asked you to find out the antiderivative of sin 2x. Antiderivative is integral of this one. Therefore, by method of inspection, I can have integral of sin 2x into dx is nothing but minus 1 by 2 into what you are having here. The integral and differentiation will get cancelled minus half cos 2x plus c that's it dear students. This is how the method of inspection. I hope you got this one. Now by the method of inspection this you need to solve cos 3x. So what is the differentiation of sin 3x? So d by dx of sin 3x gives you what? Cos 3x which is differentiation of sin theta is cos theta. Again differentiation of theta which is 3x. 3x differentiation is 3 into d by dx of x which is 1. So therefore into 3 directly I am writing. Okay. Now shifting 3 to this side cos 3x can be written as 1 by 3 into d by dx of sin 3x. Now I want integration of this. Therefore integral of cos 3x into dx differentiation and integration will get cancelled. Remaining is 1 by 3 into sin 3x. So therefore, this is what the uh, method of inspection, the antiderivative of cos 3x is 1 by 3 into sin 3x. I hope you got this one. We'll be moving on to the next one. By the method of inspection, you need to do e power 2x. What is the differentiation of e power 2x? d by dx of e power 2x is e power theta. e power theta differentiation is e power theta only e power 2x. Now 2x differentiation is 2 into d by dx of x is which is 1. So therefore 2 into 1 is 2. Now 2 can be taken to this side. Therefore e power 2x this can be written as 2 will be cross multiplied here. 1 by 2 into d by dx of e power 2x. Otherwise taking integration on both the side e power 2x into dx. Differentiation and integration will go. Remaining is 1 by 2 into e power 2x. So this is what the method of inspection you are going to have the answer. Integral of e power 2x is nothing but 1 by 2 into e power 2x. I hope you understood this one. We'll be moving on to the next one. ax plus b whole squared. Now if you differentiate q then it will be reduced to a square. If you differentiate power 4 it will be reduced to the cube. Isn't it? So I want to reduce to the form of a square means I need to take whole cube. So therefore d by dx of ax plus b whole cube can be written as what? This is theta x cube. What is theta cube differentiation with respect to theta? 3 theta squared. Isn't it? Therefore here 3 into ax plus b whole squared isn't it into differentiation of this one differentiation of ax is into a differentiation plus 0 plus you are having 
See, a plus 0. a plus 0 is always a only. Therefore, I can have ax plus b whole square. You can have 1 by 3a into d by dx of ax plus b whole cube. Otherwise, by having integration, integral of ax plus b whole squared is nothing but 1 by 3a into ax plus b whole cube. Isn't it? So, this is what the method of inspection you are going to have. I hope you understood by the method of inspection how to solve the problems. Now, we'll be moving on to by formula method how you are going to solve the problems. Now, find the following integrals they have given. The first problem here, integral of 4 into e power 3x plus 1 into dx. Dear students here, I am using the property such like I am going to separate this one by integrals. So, this can be written as which implies integral of 4 into e power 3x into dx plus 1 into dx. Similarly, I can bring this 4 outside. So, 4 into which implies e power 3x into dx constant can be bring by the fourth property, isn't it? So, plus here integral of 1 into dx. So, therefore, you can have 4 into now e power 3x integration e power 3x integration differentiation is e power 3x into 3 integration is e power 3x divided by 3 their multiplication here division that's it yes what is d by dx of d by dx of e power 3x is equal to e power 3x into 3. Here, this 3 will be multiplied here, isn't it? Differentiation of 3x is 3. Now, what happens here? That 3 will be divided. That is a ultra process of differentiation, okay? So, therefore, we are following up like as well. So, e power 3x integration is e power 3x as e power x divided by 3x differentiation is 3 plus you are having integral of 1 into dx you know integral of 1 into dx is nothing but x x plus c so this is what the answer for your question i hope you understood this one we'll move on to the next problem integral of x squared into 1 minus 1 by x squared into dx now dear student little tricky are going to have here so let me multiply this x squared inside okay so, what happens x squared into 1 is x squared. So, integral of x squared minus x squared divided by x squared into dx. Now, what happens to this integral of x squared? Now, x squared, x squared will get cancelled minus 1 into dx. Now, this is according to the third property. We can split up the integral. So, integral of x squared into dx is minus 1 into dx. Now, what is integral of x squared which is in the form of integral of x power n into dx. What is integral of x power n which is x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So, therefore, x squared n replaces 2. What happens? 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 which is 3. Therefore, x cube divided by 3 minus 1 dx integration you know which is x plus c. That's it, yes. I hope you understood this problem. We'll be moving on to the next one. Integral of ax squared plus bx plus c into dx. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to split each integral according to the property of the integral, which can be written as integral of ax squared into dx plus each I'm splitting integral of bx into dx plus integral of c into dx. Okay, now here again I am bringing this constants outside. If I am bringing that constant outside according to the property of integral again, so a into integral of x squared into dx plus b into integral of x into dx plus c into integral of 1 into dx. Now you know already this is according to the integral of what? x power n into dx can be written as x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So, therefore, you can have here in place of n which is 2, a as it is I am writing. So, x to the power of 3 divided by 3 plus b, you are having x power 1. Now, put n is equal to 1 here, x power 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 which is x squared by 2. So, x squared divided by 2 plus you know c as it is 1 into dx integration is x. So, c into x plus c. 
this is what your integration and dear students don't con get confused between this c and this c. this c is a real number this is also a real number this is in the problem i hope you understood this one we'll be moving on to the next problem ts integral of 2x squared plus e power x into dx yes you are right first split up the integral which is nothing but which implies integral of 2 into x square into dx plus integral of e power x into dx. Now you can bring this to outer side 2 into integral of x squared into dx. Now you can bring this to outside integral of x squared into dx plus e power x into dx. Now you are having 2 into integral of x squared is nothing but x cube divided by 3 plus integral of e power x is e power x only e power x plus c. This is your final answer. We'll move on to the next problem. Yes, what they've asked. Oh, integral of root x minus 1 by root x whole squared. Let us do according to the a minus b whole squared. What is a minus b whole squared? a minus b whole squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Isn't it? Now, a is nothing but here root x and b is nothing but 1 by root x. Now, substitute in the formula which will become a squared is root x whole squared along with the integration plus 1 by root x whole squared minus 2 into root x into 1 by root x into dx. Don't forget to write the dx, dear students, this one, okay? We've expanded that. Now, what happens to this function? Integral of root x whole squared is x minus 1 squared is 1 only plus c plus is there plus 1 squared is 1 only to your root x whole squared is x again minus your root x root x will go 2 into what dx now you can split each if you split each what happens which implies which implies integral of x into dx plus integral of 1 by x into dx minus integral of 2 into dx isn't it which implies dear students what is x into dx x into dx is nothing but see integral of x power n into dx is nothing but x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c isn't it now x power 1 is there therefore substituting x n is equal to 1 here you are getting 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 which is x square divided by 2 plus c so therefore you can have which implies x square divided by 2. Now this 1 by x, how to integrate 1 by x dear students? You know already differentiation of log x is nothing but 1 by x. So integration of 1 by x is nothing but log x as we studied in the formula, isn't it? Here you know differentiation of log mod x is nothing but 1 over x. So integration of 1 over x is log mod x. So therefore plus log mod x minus c 2 you can bring outside 1 into dx integration is x dx so therefore 2 so 1 into dx integration is x so 2 into x plus c this is your final answer i hope you understood this one will be moving on to the next problem integral of x cube plus 5x squared minus 4 divided by x squared into dx what do you need to do ds you can split this function by dividing each to the denominator so therefore i can have integral of x cube divided by x squared plus 5x squared divided by x squared minus 4 divided by x squared into dx now what happens here, one term, two terms of x squared, x squared will go, here x squared, x squared will go. So integral of x in the numerator plus 5 minus 4. This x squared I am going to take to the numerator which will become x power minus 2. So into x to the power of minus 2 into dx. Now I am going to split this one, what happens? Integral of x into dx plus integral of 5 into dx minus integral of 4 into x to the power of minus 2 into dx. Now what happens to this function ds? You can have this integral of x into dx is x squared divided by 2 minus you uh, plus you can have 5 outside so plus 
phi outside integral of 1 into dx integral of 1 into dx is x so 5 into x minus 4 into c this 4 can be bring outside the integral if you bring outside the integral it is 4 now x to the power of minus 2 put n equal to minus 2 so what happens here integral of x to the power of n into dx is nothing but x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c so if you put n equal to minus 2 here also minus 2 here also minus 2 x to the power of minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 which is x to the power of minus 1 divided by minus 1 so therefore x to the power of minus 1 divided by minus 1 now you can have plus c right so therefore which implies x square divided by 2 plus 5x now here minus into minus is plus 4 if you bring x to the denominator it will become 4 by x plus c now this is your final answer you are going to have now we'll be move on to the next problem this also same like integral of x cube plus 3x plus 4 divided by root x into dx how root x can be written as root x can be written as x to the power of 1 by 2 right therefore now I am splitting this one integral of x cube divided by root x plus 3x divided by root x plus 4 divided by root x into dx now you are having x to the power of 3 but denominator is x to the power of 1 by 2 if you bring the denominator to the numerator x to the power of minus 1 by 2 therefore I can write integral of I am splitting as well as x to the power of 3 into x to the power of minus 1 by 2 into dx plus here 3x into integral of x into x to the power of minus 1 by 2 into dx i hope you are understanding this step 3x i am written x to the power of 1 by 2 i am taken to the numerator which is x to the power of minus 1 by 2 meanwhile i am splitting the limit here okay plus you are having 4 into x to the power of minus 1 by 2 into dx I hope you understood this step. Now here, what is the, you're having base is same. I can add up the powers 3 minus 1 by 2. What is 3 minus 1 by 2? 2, 3 is a 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. So x to the power of 5 by 2 into dx plus now x to the power of 1 is there 1 minus 1 by 2 which is 1 by 2 only. Therefore, 3 into x to the power of 1 by 2 plus 4 into x to the power of minus 1 by 2 into dx don't forget to write down the dx dear students okay so therefore you are now integrating this one now put uh, x to the power of what is that integral of x power n into dx is nothing but x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 now if you are writing accordingly replace n by 5 by 2 so what happens you can have the answer which implies x to the power of 5 by 2 plus 1 divided by 5 by 2 plus 1 again here see dear students 3 can be taken outside the integral so plus 3 into now this is according to the x to the power of 1 by 2 into dx which is according to this formula replace n by 1 by 2 which happens x to the power of 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 by 2 plus 1 minus now you are having so plus now you can bring this 4 to the outside the integral. So plus 4 into what happens to us? 4 into x to the power of minus 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by minus 1 by 2 plus 1. Now you are having there is in place of n as minus 1 by 2. Now let us solve that. You are having 5 by 2 plus 1 is 2 ones are 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. So x to the power of 7 by 2 divided by 7 by 2 don't forget to write plus c ds i have not written i'm writing now plus c after integrating whole term okay 7 by 2 plus now you're having 3 into x to the power of 1 by 2 plus 1 which is nothing but 3 by 2 so x to the power of 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 now you have plus 4 into x to the power of minus half plus 1 which is nothing but plus half so 1 by 2 divided by 1 by 2. Now bringing this plus c. Now bringing this 2 to the numerator and 7 keeping as it is. Now you can have here 3, 3 will get cancelled. 2 will come to the denominator. Now 2, 4 is 8. So therefore which implies 2 into x to the power of 7 by 2 divided by 7 plus 2 into x to the power of 3 by 2. 4, 2 is 8 
plus 8 into x to the power of 1 by 2 plus c. So this is your answer. I hope you understood that problem. We'll be moving on to the next problem which is x cube minus x squared plus x minus 1 into dx. So what you are going to do with this dear students? We are going to have x cube minus x squared plus x minus 1. So therefore here numerator you can take x squared common from this to this keeping as it is. So therefore integral of x squared into remaining is here x minus 1 plus x minus 1. So from these I am taking x squared common divided by x minus 1 into dx. Now from these two I can take x minus 1 as common factor. If I take x minus 1 integral of x minus 1 into x squared plus 1 is remaining divided by x minus 1 into dx. Now x minus 1, x minus 1 will get cancelled. Remaining is integral of x squared plus 1 into dx. Now you can have which implies integral of x squared into dx. Split up the function. Integral of 1 into dx. You know already according to the formula x squared into dx integration is. So x cube divided by 3 plus x plus c. So this is your final answer dear students. I hope you got this one. We'll be moving on to the next problem, dears. Integral of 1 minus x into root x into tx. Now here let us multiply this root x to both. So what happens here? Integral of root x into 1 is root x minus x into root x is x power 1, x to the power of 1 by 2. Correct? Into dx. Now you can have this one. Integral of root x is x to the power of 1 by 2 into dx minus integral of x to the power of 1 plus 1 by 2 which is 3 by 2. So x to the power of 3 by 2 into dx. How we have taken x to the power of 1 plus 1 by 2? 2 ones are 2. So 2 ones are 2. 2 plus 1 by 2 which is x to the power of 3 by 2. I hope you got that step. Now here which implies now you can have x to the power of 1 by 2 by putting in x to the power of n into dx which is integral x to the power of n plus 1 plus c. So here by putting that you can have x to the power of 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 by 2 plus 1. Therefore minus here also same thing x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay, n replaces 3 by 2. Again further solving, we are having x to the power of 1 by 2 plus 1 just we told 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 plus minus x to the power of 3 by 2 plus 1. 2 ones are 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 by 2 divided by 5 by 2. Now taking this to the numerator, you are getting plus c. Okay, don't forget to write plus c. So plus c. So 2 will go to the numerator 2 into x to the power of 3 by 2 divided by 3 minus 2 into x to the power of 5 by 2 divided by 5 plus c. So this is your final answer dear students. I hope you understood we will be moving on to the next problem. Integral of root x into 3x squared plus 2x plus 3 into dx. Now let us multiply this root x to the each term of this one. So therefore you can have integral of 3 into x squared. Now root x I am writing x to the power of 1 by 2. I am splitting this one into dx. Now again plus you are having plus integral of 2 into x into. Now here x to the power of 1 by 2 into dx. Now again plus plus 3 into multiplication of root x into x to the power of 1 by 2 into dx. If you want you can bring this 2 out. How I brought here 3. So therefore you can have this 3 here. So 3 into integral of x to the power of 1 by 2. The base are same. I can add out the powers. 2 plus 1 by 2 which will be giving you 2 2 is a 4. 4 plus 1 which is 5 by 2. So therefore x to the power of 5 by 2 into dx plus 2 into x to the power of 1 plus 1 by 2 is 3 by 2. x to the power of 3 by 2 into dx plus 3 into integral of x to the power of 1 by 2 into dx. So therefore you can have here 3 into integral of x to the power of 5 by 2 is x to the power of 5 by 2 plus 1 divided by 5 by 2 plus 1 plus 
2 as it is. Integral of x power 3 by 2 is x to the power of 3 by 2 plus 1 divided by 3 by 2 plus 1 plus 3 into x to the power of 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 by 2 plus 1 according to the integral of x power n into dx. Now again further simplification gives you the answer. So here 5 by 2 plus 1 is nothing but 7 by 2. 7 by 2 when go to the numerator 2 by 7. So 3 into 2 by 7 correct. I am skipping one step here. 3 into x to the power of 7 by 2 divided by 7. See 2 will be in the denominator will go to the numerator plus Again here, 3 by 2 plus 1 is 5 by 2. 5 by 2, 2 will go to the numerator which will become. So, 2 into 2 x to the power of 5 by 2 divided by 5. Again plus 1 by 2 plus 1 is nothing but 3 by 2. So, therefore 3 into 2 will go to the numerator x to the power of 3 by 2 divided by 3. I hope you got this one plus c. So, plus c. Okay. So, here you are having 3 2s are 6 x to the power of 7 by 2 divided by 7 plus 4 x to the power of 5 by 2 divided by 5 plus 3 2s are 6 x to the power of 3 by 2 divided by 3 plus c. I hope you understood this problem. Now, we will be moving on to the next problem. Now, what they have asked? Integral of 2 x minus 3 cos x plus e power x into dx. Now, let us split this one. 2 I am taking outside x into dx minus 3 I am taking outside cos x into dx plus integral of e power x into dx. Now what I am going to do 2 as it is x power 1 integration is x power 1 plus 1 which is 2 divided by 2 minus 3 into cos x integration is nothing but what minus sin x ok. So therefore you can have minus into minus which will be plus sin x plus e power x integration is e power x plus c. That's it dear students. I hope you understood this one. We'll be moving on to the next one. Integral of 2x squared minus 3 sin x plus 5 root x into dx. Let us split this one. See 2 I'm taking outside the integral. 2 into integral of x squared into dx. Okay. Again minus 3 I'm taking outside the integral. Integral of sin x into dx. Again 5 I am taking outside the integral 5 into root x I am writing it as x to the power of 1 by 2 into dx. Now what happens to this function? 2 into integral of x squared into dx is x to the power of 2 plus 1 which is 3 divided by 2 plus 1 which is 3 minus 3 into sin x integration is given by cos x therefore which is cos x plus 5 into x to the power of 1 by 2 is 5 into x to the power of 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 by 2 plus 1 plus c. So therefore which will become 2 x cube divided by 3 minus 3 cos x. See this 1 by 2 plus 1 is 3 by 2. Now 2 will go to the numerator 5 2 is 10 into x to the power of 3 by 2 divided by 3 plus c. That is your answer dear students. I hope you understood this one. Now we'll be moving on to the next problem. Integral of secant x into secant x plus tan x into dx. Now let us multiply this each. So if you multiply this each and separate the integrals, what happens? Which implies integral of secant x into secant x is secant squared x into dx plus integral of secant x into tan x into dx. I'm splitting here as well. What is integral of secant squared x? Which is tan x. So, which implies tan x plus integral of secant x into tan x is secant x. So, secant x plus c. This is all according to the formula we have found out the answers. I hope you understood this session how to solve the problems on the formula method and also by method of inspection. Dear students, these type of problems will be asked for one marker or to marker. I hope you got this session and enjoyed how to solve the problems based on the formulae as well as by inspection method. Thank you. Have a nice day. Please keep watching.